Some of you may have heard that the Tesla Model Y, which is currently being manufactured at the brand new Gigafactory in Austin, Texas, is unique. And some of you may already know what that uniqueness is. But let's take a moment today to appreciate that the next major step in electric car technology is brewing right now on a Tesla assembly line. And unlike every other firm on the planet, Tesla isn't reserving its latest and greatest technology for the future. Hey everyone, and welcome to Tesla News, where we bring you the newest and best updates about Tesla and Elon Musk. For daily videos, please consider subscribing to our channel. They're putting everything they've got into making a mid-level crossover SUV, which is admirable and something that people should be aware of. So let's talk about why the Texas-built Model Y is the best electric car ever manufactured. Let's go right to the point. The batteries are the most significant distinction between a Tesla Model Y made at the current Fremont, California facility and a Tesla Model Y built at the upcoming Austin, Texas plant. The heart of an electric automobile is its batteries, which are responsible for practically all the vehicle's major functions. The scope, the ability, and the billing rate, the Model Y, which is built in Texas, is the first Tesla vehicle to be equipped with their brand new battery format which is termed 4680 and refers to the size of the cell, which is a cylinder with a diameter of 46 millimeters and a length of 80 millimeters. Tesla's Model Y batteries are designed as 2170, which is the same naming format as the diameter of 21 millimeters and the length of 70 millimeters. Because a cylindrical battery is simply a tight roll of material inside a tubular packaging, the longer the roll, the longer the path of resistance and the lower the battery's power output except in the case of the Tesla 4680 cell. This defies typical battery conventions by having five times the volume and six times the power output of the 2170 cell. The Tesla Model Y batteries have more power, which as Tim the Toolman Taylor would cheerfully tell us is always better. The quick answer for how Tesla is able to do this is the internal design of the cell. In a regular battery, you'd have one tab on the positive terminal and one tab on the negative terminal and all of the energy would flow between these two points of contact. Inside the Tesla 4680 cell, there's a network of tiny copper shingles that provide thousands of points for electrons to move through, just like it is with people. Consider an island with only two bridges connecting it to the mainland versus an island with a thousand bridges connecting it to the mainland. Traffic will flow more swiftly to and from the island with a thousand bridges, which leads us to reason number two, faster charging. Not only will there be more power flowing out of these new cells, but there will also be more power flowing into the cells, which will come from your supercharging sessions. This also applies to current stations, where there will be less energy lost or wasted due to inefficiency. It also opens the door for Tesla to produce even higher output chargers that can match the capabilities of the 4680 cell during the charging process. So whatever the V4 supercharger's new maximum capacity is, 300 or 325 kilowatt hours, or potentially more, it will only be able to function at full capacity in vehicles with the 4680 cell, providing us greater power and efficiency on the cell level of the battery, one big cell doing the same task. Tesla will be able to bring in even higher output charges that can match the capabilities of the 4680 cell during the charging process. So whatever the new maximum capacity of the V4 supercharger turns out to be, whether 300 or 325 kilowatt hours or more, it will only be able to run at full capacity into vehicles with the 4680 cell. So we have higher power and efficiency at the battery cell level with one huge cell doing the same task as five little cells. And this extends to be the full size of the battery pack since the cells themselves are so much larger and have these strong steel casings. They can actually start to become load bearing supports within the battery pack's construction and even become part of the vehicle's frame structure. The typical technique to build an electric car battery pack is to load all of your cells into a module, which is pretty much the same thing, simply a box, mainly made of plastic, and then those modules are joined into a pack, which is simply a larger box that stores all of the smaller boxes, as well as all the other components for connecting the flow of power and dispensing heat and all that amongst the modules. So a regular EV battery pack has a lot more than just the cells, whereas this new type of battery pack, which is exclusively available in Texas, contains only the cells and no filler components. A 4680 battery pack contains no module. Because we have these enormous cylindrical battery cells sandwiched between big slabs of steel, we end up with an extraordinarily solid construction that is mostly made up of the batteries. For much more energy stored inside the pack, which implies longer range for your car, around 20 to 30% more real-world range with everything combined, which we obviously enjoy. 
but there are also additional benefits. The super rigid frame means less flex during aggressive cornering or emergency maneuvering, giving the vehicle more control and strength in the event of a collision. You obviously want crumple zone, but you also want the automobile to stay upright and not roll over at the same point. The body structure of a normal car is made up of the laundry list of different components that are individually stamped and casted, and then all of them are bolted, welded, or even glued together to form the car's internal frame. This isn't ideal because it introduces potential failure sites, corrosion, and misalignment of components. We've known for years that Tesla has struggled with issues like this, particularly misalignment. Tesla is infamous for panel gaps, cockeyed doors, and things that don't quite fit correctly. But we can solve all these problems by replacing all of those little components with a single solid lump of metal. So one piece of metal becomes the front frame of the car, and another piece makes the back frame. And die casting, which involves molten aluminum being pressed into a mold, is the only technique to create such a massive component in just one piece. The 6,000 tons of force is applied to the liquid metal, which completely fills the mold and creates one perfectly formed component. The front and back castings are then joined to the structural battery pack, and the car's underbody is ready to go. Tesla is the only automobile business using any of these manufacturing techniques, and they're only being employed all at once on the Model Y vehicle being constructed in Giga, Texas. Even the $140,000 Model S Plaid lacks this technology. The S and X are still made the same way they have been for years. Only the Model Y and vehicles manufactured in Giga, Texas receive this cutting edge of Tesla manufacturing and battery technology, which seems odd because it contradicts general customer expectations that we have to pay more to get more. But in this case, we don't have a car that most average families could afford to purchase and would find incredibly helpful and adaptable, really comes equipped with the world's most modern electric vehicle technology. The first is the amazing new Texas version that we've been hyping up, and the second is the regular old California version, which is still a dope car that anyone should be happy to own, but that's not why we're here today. We want to know which is better because we're humans, and we always want the latest and greatest thing no matter how destructive that attitude may be to the very planet we live on. What's the best way to find out which automobile you'll get? Most people will find this extremely inconvenient, but I believe it's all part of the fun of owning a Tesla, as well as the delivery experience. So this was all. Add your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the bell icon and also like, subscribe, and share our channel, and stay with us until our next video. We will see you soon with our next video, so be with us and go watch our Tesla Model X video on your left to see some positive aspects about it as well. Or you can also watch newly updated Tesla Model 3 2022 on your right and learn more about the Tesla world. Thank you so much for watching.